The triple threat that hits health care across the country, the surge of flu, RSV, and COVID-19, coupled with staffing shortages, is really hitting the health care system hard, particularly children's hospitals. And there is some new evidence that they're having difficulty coping under that strain. In Alberta, for example, we expect a children's hospice to discharge all of its respite patients by today. It's the Rotary Flames House in Calgary. Alberta Health Services has re deployed its staff to the Alberta Children's Hospital because it needs the resources there. Uh, it's dealing with a surge in those respiratory viruses. Similar scenarios playing out in other children's hospitals right across the country. There's a BC hospital declaring an emergency, for example. Chio in Ottawa calling in the Red Cross. A small team is expected to arrive there this week. In Newfoundland and Labrador, a hospital canceling surgeries as well. So that's the pediatric backdrop, but we're going to move on from that for just a moment with Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who's an infectious diseases specialist at Toronto General Hospital and is in Toronto this morning. Welcome back, Dr. Bogosh. Thank you, Heather. Good we morning. are going to come back to children in a second, but interestingly, we're getting some new reporting on CBC News this morning from Lauren Pelly that hospitals in Ontario, and this won't be limited to Ontario, I wouldn't imagine, preparing for an increase in adult flu patients. And one hospital is telling us it's bracing for a 20% increase in adult admissions, 20% more than what it normally sees in a typical flu season. So how much is this going to exacerbate what is already a crisis situation? Oh, it, it certainly will. I mean, I'm, we are admitting adults to hospital already and have been for, for a few weeks now with influenza. It's out there. Uh, the burden in Canada and, of course, in much of the Northern Hemisphere is growing. People are getting sick. Uh, some people are getting sick enough that they require uh, to, to seek health care, either in an outpatient or an inpatient setting. There's a lot of flu out there right now, and certainly we've got a long winter ahead. Uh, we saw influenza uh, come out of the gate quickly. It, the season started earlier than it typically would, even uh, factoring in the pandemic. Uh, so could, when we think of, look at 2014, for example, to 2019, the flu season started earlier and really start uh, revved up much faster than it normally does. There is a large burden of flu. I know I keep repeating that, but that's the real message. Hey, flu shots are widely available. They're free. They reduce the chance of getting flu. If you do get flu, it can mitigate the severity of illness. It's a wonderful idea to get a flu shot right now if someone hasn't already got one. And they're available for people aged six months of age and older. So that might help blunt the impact and help people stay out oh, of yeah. hospital. That's important information. Uh, it seems, and maybe you can give me the better read on this, that RSV has sort of stabilized right now, that flu, influenza, is the big concern of the moment. That's correct. I mean, it, RSV certainly isn't gone, but based on some of the markers that we have, it's depending on where you are in the country, rates have leveled off. And in some places, they've actually gone down. Uh, even in some places, they've decreased even significantly. But unfortunately, influenza is, is, is taking over. And even in, in the pediatric world and the adult world, uh, we're seeing a lot of influenza right now. And uh, the data that's uh, on, on um, uh, available and publicly available demonstrates a very significant rise in pediatric-related influenza hospitalizations as well. Well, let, let me bring in some of those, Dr. Bogosh. In fact, from the Public Health Agency of Canada, we got the latest flu watch, and the numbers are 223 flu-related admissions of children in the 12 pediatric hospitals mm -hmm. in this country. This goes back to the last full week of November. There's the data up there on the screen. And that was the most of any week in at least a decade. So you're right, the numbers are there, and the conclusion was flu is back with a vengeance. I'm wondering what advice you might have for, for parents. I mean, we're hearing of parents having to go from emerge to emerge to emerge, trying to get some help, not sure what to do, how to find out where to go. What would your message be? There's some very simple messaging that I think is extremely helpful throughout the, the entire winter. It's get your flu shot is number one. And we know for so six months of age and older, this is available, uh, and this will truly help, not just at an individual level, but at a community level as well. The second thing is masks. I know we've had to, unfortunately, make masks a contentious issue, but we know that masks will reduce an individual's risk of getting the infection. It's not going to eliminate it, but it is a pretty straightforward 
tool that can reduce one's risk of getting an infection. And of course, at a population level, we know masks don't stop waves, but they at least can take the edge off one. And that's what we need right now, given that we have a pretty massive wave of influenza. What's interesting, too, is just predict, you know, obviously influenza is predictably unpredictable, as we've said for a long, long time. You know, what, what, what's in Australia, which is an imperfect marker of what en- ends up happening up in the northern hemisphere, their flu season started earlier. In some places, it actually ended earlier as well. So, you know, we can hope that maybe we've just frame shifted this up uh, a few weeks and that it ends a bit earlier. But obviously, hope is not a strategy. We are having issues right this minute. And we need to take steps to at least protect people and the community right this minute.